on the Royal Princess, one of the biggest luxury cruise ships in the world. Beautiful. Makes you wonder how the keeper float. <laughs> it's all aboard for the start of the busy summer season cruising the Mediterranean. Unfortunately, the trolley actually fell with other bags into the water. For three and a half thousand passengers. This is unbelievable, this is. It's the trip of a lifetime. You're in a real five-star luxury bubble here, really. Upstairs, a chance to relax and celebrate. David, you may kiss your bride. Our policy here is never say no. Fruit or chocolate. Let's go. While downstairs, 1,400 staff work round the clock to meet the highest standards. That is unacceptable. $2,000 for a cruise, and that's what we give them. And deal with the daily dramas of life aboard. 911, medical emergency. Just a half a billion euro ship and 25 year old blonde. What could possibly go wrong? Tonight, the ship's heading to Montenegro. But Chef is facing a staffing crisis. We've got to find a solution. I can't okay. sit here and say, you know what? It's not my problem. Lauren must prove she has what it takes to drive the ship's huge tender boats. I literally haven't driven a tender in, like, I can't remember. What? And the onboard magicians must master a dangerous new illusion. Now nope, this ain't gonna work. Right, Johnny, can you let me out? Because I'm having a hard time breathing now. <laughs> Let's go, let's go, get it inside. As the ship sails into Couture in Montenegro, down in the galley, it's also full steam ahead. Wait, 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 I give you extra sauce. The team must produce a range of specialty dining experiences, from themed dinners... Wipe the finger marks off the plates, please. ..to live cooking demonstrations. And then you simply transfer the pasta over to the plate. Thank you so much, huh? It takes 300 staff from over 40 countries to make this happen. Getting enough staff to produce these events falls to executive chef David. But today, he's facing a crisis. Being 17 people short is devastating to us in the galley. We don't have the manpower in specialised areas like butchery and pastry. It is impacting the operation. So we have no replacement, no replacement, no replacement. It's causing major disruptions for David and right-hand man Sandesh. We're the ones who are faced with the, with the issues, mate. We've got to find a solution. I can't okay. sit here and say, you know what, it's not my problem. Yeah, I get you. If they don't get more staff at the next port, then Chef's Table, the most popular and expensive dining event, will have to be cancelled. Oh, it irritates me, it frustrates me. I don't know, I don't know what to do. That's impossible, mate. Hi there. Would you check to see about my wallet? For lost and found? Yes. Yeah. Because okay. I have no money. No problem. <laughs> In passenger services, front desk agent Timothy is also dealing with a crisis. I had no phone, no driver's license, no money. Can you help? I'm in a top of position. Sandy from Florida lost her wallet ashore. So Timothy's helping her with a cash advance. What's going on? Why are you losing things? Because I'm celebrating my 70th birthday. Oh, happy birthday. That's awesome. That turned out very good, isn't well, it? Yeah, no, maybe wallet. not so much. I'm poor. <laughs> well, you know what? You'll be saving a lot. Yeah, well, right? I can't shop no more. Exactly. I can't shop till I'm So drunk. that might be better for you. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody breezy, isn't it? Up on deck 17, hotel services engineer Scott is also working to make sure passengers are okay. I'm supposed to be in the Met. Feels like I'm in England. An accident has caused a potential hazard to passengers, and he's been drafted in to fix it. There's actually a passenger down there on the balcony. That's my main worry, all them cabins down there. Make sure your tools don't fly over the side either. A glass safety panel has been shattered. And left unchecked, it could fall and injure passengers on their balconies below. We've got to be really careful what we do here. Maybe stay here, mate, and then I'm going to go. I'm going to go down. 
Is there any way we could advise them to stay inside? Would you mind informing them? Yeah, I'd probably yeah. Unable to change the panel in the strong winds, Scott had a brainwave. All right, lads. Do you have any of the sticky plastic? No, no, no. The sticky one, the one that you, you wrap everything up in. I had a panel. That's sticky. That's just like cling film, innit? Is there any of that sticky plastic? The pipe wrap? It's like a plastic and a roll. And then... uh, we don't have you. With passenger safety at stake, Scott must find a solution urgently. How can we not have sticky plastic? <laughs> if we don't have any, we'll have to remove it. Can't leave it like that. Don't worry about brakes on it yet. No. Also used to working in hazardous conditions are married magicians Johnny and Trisha. It is nerve-wracking because we could get injured, we could get hurt. To pull in the crowds, they want to perform one of Houdini's most famous illusions. But it's a dangerous trick. Are you doing it? I'm, tr I'm getting it tight. Starting with Trish in a plastic bag locked in a box, the couple must then swap places in just seconds. It's not one to try at home. Oi. Yeah? yeah? Is it hot in there? Yeah. I mean, it's not that bad now, because the lid's off. Uh, I think there's a bit of air in there. Yeah, a little bit. There's a danger of suffocation. And to add to the challenge, Johnny will be tying his wife up in solid steel chains. He enjoys this part too much. <laughs> Wait. I mean, I ain't done it super tight, but... It's tight enough. Right. So imagine... Yeah. I'll tighten it. I'll not tie it. I'll just tighten it. No, nope, this ain't gonna work. Right. No. Why? I know it for a fact. No. One, two. No way, Jose. Right, Johnny, can you let me out? Because I'm having a hard time breathing now. If Trish can't even get out of the bag, the trick could be a non starter. Out on deck, Engineer Scott is also facing tough working conditions as high winds hit the Adriatic coast. I wish I had a wingsuit, just... <laughs> just take off the front first. Put it, put it vertical. With the last precious rolls of sticky back plastic safely in his possession... We'll get another one in. One more. Scott and his team must ensure the shattered panel is secured overnight. Top work that, top graft. I'll tell you what, pinch that as well, put it in the workshop. Can't have enough sticky plastic. It's like an original Banksy. But Scott's masterpiece can't stay like this for long. It must be replaced as soon as they reach the sheltered waters of Koto. Seven point four knots. Gap will, gap still clear. Whilst passengers soak up views of Montenegro, it's nothing new for seasoned cruisers Brian and Pat, who are on their fourth visit. We often say it between us. <laughs> Do they know who we are? <laughs> but they don't know, and they don't care. <laughs> the Morels from Essex are currently the most well-travelled passengers on board and are part of an exclusive group known as Elite Passengers. There are lots of competitive Elite members, yes, and we yes. all take it seriously. <laughs> Every single one of us, although we don't like to admit it, no. but we do. Yeah, it's fiercely competitive. Everyone wants to be number one. In a few days, the Most Travelled Passenger Award will be announced at the Captain's Circle event, and they're desperate to retain their crown. Yeah. We are used to being at the top end, yes. <laughs> and we like it there, yeah. yeah. Our steward salutes us when we come out the door now. <laughs> it does create a bit of snobbery. We love it. We, yeah. in fact, bring it on. But the reigning champions might have competition. That means that good. 70-year-old Sandy is also attending the invitation-only event. A peanut butter cup over there they have. Oh, my gosh, that's so good. I could eat two of them, but I don't. I got willpower, I guess, after going on so many cruises. 
Sandy is a frequent cruiser, and this is her third Mediterranean cruise. But it doesn't stop there. I've been cruising probably over 25 years. I've been on over 100 cruises, and I love it. And I still go on at least four or five a year, anytime I can. For Singleton Sandy, cruising is more than just a holiday. And I love cruises because it's the only way I get pampered. Nobody else will pamper me. And you don't have a husband or boyfriend that will pamper you like the cruise line. Here, I don't have to do nothing. Why wouldn't a woman love something like this? But first, Sandy faces an anxious wait to see who will win most traveled passenger. Today, Royal Princess is anchored in Kotor, the best preserved medieval town in Montenegro. While passengers head to shore, new bridge officer Lauren is facing one final hurdle before she can be signed off to take charge by the captain. Bloody hell, mate, look at all this. She must learn to drive the ship's tender boats, which are bigger, faster, and more powerful than anything she's handled before. What does all of this do? Yeah, <laughs> I just want to done. switch everything. See they're all around, let's go. Let's get out of there. Overseeing Lauren's driving lesson is deckhand William, who's taking the helm whilst passengers are dropped ashore. You've certainly got the idea of pressure when you've got possibly 200 people watching you. There you go. That's it, are we alongside? Yep, yeah, your stern's nicely tucked in there, mate. With everyone safely disembarked, Lauren jumps into the driving seat. But she's a little rusty. I literally haven't driven a tender in, like, I can't remember. What? <laughs> well, best of luck. I know. Back on the ship. There's wasps all over it. Ex-Navy hardman Scott grabs his chance to fix the glass panel. <laughs> There's another one there, look. But it looks like something else got there first. I don't like wasps. Bumblebees I don't mind, but wasps, can't be doing with them. Oh, you bugger. Don't tighten it up too much, Anatoly. Jobs are good and complete. Go the other side of that, boy. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll uh, yeah. be stuck there for ages. Back in Kotor Bay, Lauren is having her first driving lesson in the ship's tender boats. With her colleagues watching from afar, the pressure is on. How are you finding it so far? It's like having a new toy to play with, yeah, definitely, but it's... Um... Quite an expensive toy. When you're getting close, get down to three knots, yeah. then once you start operating the engines stern, the power drop, the she stops speed drops fast. away quite rapidly, yeah. That guy is ruining my approach. I can't do it. <laughs> Please move out the way, little white boat. Tender control, tender 15. Right. Yeah, uh, is there any possibility you can ask that shore side tender to uh, move back a bit? Yeah, let me see. First. Yeah, he's moving him out the way. Yeah. Should be it. fine now. Just to neutral. There you go. More power for us, sir. We need bow in. The tender she's driving is worth over £300,000, and with one wrong manoeuvre, she could collide with the £520 million ship. Yeah, we'll burst with the starboard engine astern. There we go, to stand line on. Job done. That's it, perfect. Lauren has managed to parallel park the tender. If the captain deems her ready, the next vessel she'll be driving is the cruise ship. As the tender boats return, Chef is anxiously awaiting new staff to join him in the ship's understaffed galley. He's expecting new joiners from the Philippines and India. But will there be enough to ensure a fully staffed kitchen? Hello, welcome on board. I will need your passport, your contract. How are you? Where are you from? India, no? Yeah. You're, uh, you're a pastry comedian? Yes. All chefs? Very good, huh? Well, I'm very happy that you're on board, huh? Because we are, we've been short of crew. In total, he's received six new chefs today meaning he can go ahead with the sold-out chef's table event. It's a huge relief for us. I'm ready to crack on, so is the team. We're back 
firing on almost all cylinders. Guests will pay almost £100 each to sample David's six-course extravaganza. I'm putting my reputation on the line and it's all about me tonight, so I'm going to showcase me. What on earth was that? And Chef isn't the only one attempting to showcase his skills. My foot slipped, <laughs> slipped off the, <laughs> the edge and I nearly had put the top of the thing. Yeah, <laughs> After a disastrous first rehearsal with Trisha unable to escape the bag, she and Johnny are having a final attempt at their dangerous new illusion. We nearly killed each other last night. Like, literally. We almost quit. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing this no more, I can't do it. Oh. You all right? Yeah! You all right? Go, Sam. Did we do it? <laughs> Trish, I'll put lids on, get out. <laughs> I like leaving them in there. Get out like I normally I'm do. I'm trying. I can't get out, can I? I'm stuck in the bag. It's an encouraging start, but all too soon the pair will have to perform the new illusion perfectly in front of 800 guests. Watch. Ah, crap. <laughs> you all right in there? I've got a headache a minute. I just smashed my head. Like proper dizzy. Mm -hmm. I really bang my head then. Still don't feel right. At this point, we're never doing this illusion, are we? They haven't got long to perfect the trick. And if they can't crack it, they may have to drop it. It's going to take a lot of practice. It's going to... We're going to have to do this thing at least 100 times over and over again with no problems before we'll even attempt to put it on the stage. My God. I've had so much gold on my shoulders in my life. It's the moment of truth for new bridge officer Lauren, who shares a cabin with engineer husband Mike. She's been called for a meeting with the captain to discuss her future. Don't mess it up. <laughs> Thanks, darling. See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Hello, Lauren. After three weeks of intense learning, today Lauren finds out whether she's done enough to step up into the new role. How are you? Good. Oh, good. Please take a seat. Thank you. So this is your first contract as second officer. Yes. And... I'm just getting used to the ship. She's huge. My last ship was essentially a baby. Quite a jump. Yeah. <laughs> Have you any other kind of ship experience? I've got a fair amount of experience of working with lifeboats. I did a bit of work on the side of the lifeboats. Right. And then I was a sea cadet. It's in the blood. This is all I was ever going to do. Well, the uh, staff captain and senior first have signed off on your knowledge of the bridge. Thank you. The most important thing as senior officer of a watch is to call me if at any time you're in any doubt whatsoever. I'll definitely be phoning fairly rapidly if I need anything. <laughs> you're not going to like me by the end of this contract. Back in her cabin, the gravity of the job ahead is beginning to sink in. This is the end of a very long period of studying and understudying other second officers and the chance to have my own watch, run it the way that I'd quite like it to be run, and prove that I can keep the ship safe, I can hold the charge, and I can do the job. I can be a senior watchkeeper. I got this. <laughs> One wolf click on. And then there is two bottles of wine, so we put on the stage. As night falls, hostess Barbara is preparing an exclusive soiree for elite and platinum passengers who have cruised for more than 50 days. It's pistols at dawn, yeah. isn't it, Brian? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guests are anxious to discover who has won the coveted prize of most travelled passenger. Yeah, Will it feel undone? undone? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It is a big deal because especially it's a formal night and the captain will be here, so they like to come to see who is the number one. Oh, right. The Morels from Essex have held the crown for the last three weeks. If they win tonight, it would be a personal best. Here for the Morels. But with new joiners from all over the world, tonight could be the end of their reign at the top. They're not the only ones out to impress. It's kind of nice. They give you drinks and you get the personally meet the captain if you like. And I bought this outfit for the captain. Someone comes on next week with more, that's that. And if we find out who it is, we kill them. <laughs> I'm going to hear you. <laughs> Shut up. Evening. 
Look at me like this. I know, I know. Isn't it dreadful? <laughs> there may be rivals to their crown, but Pat and Brian like to keep relations civil. We're talking to these ni nice people who are number two. Woo! Yahoo! <laughs> are you ready for the number one? Yes. Come on, say yes. Yes! Good. They are from England with 975 days at sea. Wow. Please welcome to the stage Mr. and Mrs. Morell. <laughs> The Morels have beaten off stiff competition to win the prestigious title of most travelled passengers. Brilliant, They're celebrities. Brilliant. Wow. <laughs> and all we've done is come on cruise and enjoy ourselves. Yes. Yes. Hey. Hey. We've cloaked up. That's the most expensive one. <laughs> the lobster's cooked too much, huh? You see how it's pulled together like that? It's too long in the oven, huh? Next now fully staffed and after eight hours of preparation, Okay. Chef David is finally ready to present his six-course private dining experience. All right, we're ready. Oh. Have a fantastic evening. Thank you very much. Oh. Good night. Oh. Welcome. Oh. Welcome. Oh. Welcome. Oh. Thank you. Next time, the apes are running riot in Gibraltar. Right, so the monkey savaged you. <laughs> it's a critical moment for Lauren. It's the first time I've ever been given the charge of the ship. It's a huge responsibility. One couple's bag goes for an unwelcome dip in the ocean. If it was my bag, I would go crazy bananas. And tensions run high as the Hawleys struggle to pull off their dangerous new illusion. I didn't know what you were saying. Don't I've got you yet. Out so you doing that distracts me out. more. If Open you just it, let... bam.